Scott Mendelson. Hello everyone, I am MeccaRandom42, your favorite YouTube harpy. I had to, I have to, anytime I see a Scott Mendelson article, I'm not going to read the entire thing. I don't want to just take his stuff and, and read it. I skimmed through this. I read through this. All right. <sighs> Why I'm making a video about this article? Well, A, Rob sent this to me and I think we're trying to make each other, who, who can, who can have an aneurysm first with article links? <laughs> I think that has to be it. And, and, and two, Scott Mendelson is just cashing in on the anniversary of Batman and the fact that Star Wars is going to get him a click. Both of these things are going to get him a click. Here, here's the thing. After reading through this article, what, what is he saying? Well, he's basically saying that Batman was the start of the big comic book adaptations that are kind of making Hollywood oh, emotionally and, and financially and creatively bankrupt at, at this point, you know, and of course Hollywood's doing fine. They're making so much money. Everything makes money. Nothing loses except Solo, A Star Wars Story, Ghostbusters 2016, um, and maybe the Men in Black re reboot, sequel, whatever the crap it was. I hate having to kind of agree with him here. I wouldn't blame Batman per se. I, w I wouldn't blame Batman or Star Wars or any one thing. I think it's when Hollywood started really, really losing sight of their visionaries. They started really not understanding that you have these creative teams of people that can actually get something done and really make something wonderful, you know? And in the 80s, it was definitely Spielberg and Lucas and, and these sort of people. We really didn't have a lot of that. We started getting studio notes. We started getting, hey, the studio wants this thing, so we need to add this to the movie. We started getting a lot of, hey, what can we adapt that people will buy? What, what, what can we bring up that people will, will buy and make, you know, the, the, into the next big franchise instead of, and instead of these these lightning in a bottle things, you know, like your Ghostbusters or your Goonies or even Lost Boys, which is my favorite movie. Pretty much anything from like 1987, I really love. So Goonies, Lost Boys, Spaceballs, Princess Bride. Yeah, I lo love, God, 1987 was a good year for movies. So was it 84 with Ghostbusters. Point is, my, my, my point in talking about this article, this, I don't know how long this video is going to be. He, he seems to want to just A, cash in on the trendiness of Batman, B, cash in on the trendiness of Star Wars, but he does make some really, really good points. And I hate having to agree with Scott Mendelson on some of these, but no, when, when, when Hollywood, he, he comes in and he starts listing stuff like, you know, like Spawn and Blade and X-Men and, and, and Dick Tracy and the Shadow and the Rocketeer and the Phantom and even the Mask, all, all of these things, they're all comic book adaptations. So yeah, you can definitely trace it back to like the, the Batman being like the first really, really successful one of my generation because I was, you know, what, born when Superman came out? Yeah, 10 and a half years earlier. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit, uh, I was a little young to appreciate Superman and he's never been my favorite of the, the comic book people anyway. My problem with the 90s, a lot of the stuff in the 90s, like I was, I was such a hipster curmudgeon in the 90s. I was listening or, or watching stuff like Nightmare Sisters, you know, Linnea Quigley, Scream Queen, B-movies, anything on USA Up All Night. I was watching Nightstand. I was watching all kinds of stuff. Howard Stern, you know, I was watching not the blockbuster movies, but I was still keeping tabs on what was going on with the blockbuster movies because... They, they really didn't feel like they had any soul or heart to them. Every every movie, probably pretty much almost every movie, except for stuff like maybe Train Spotting or God, even the Boondock Saints. And, and I and I know that one's kind of a controversial one now. I, I still defend it as being, you know, pretty. It's fun. It's different. It was fun and different. And I liked it. But we, we had so many of these Hollywood cash grab adaptations. And that that is absolutely something I agree with. We, we had these Hollywood cash grab, you know, like the Dick Tracy's in the shadow. And you, you know, the only appealing thing about Dick Tracy as a, as a kid being that age was, oh my God, we can say Dick. What do you mean? No, it's his name. We can say Dick. Dick. Hi, Dick. How's it going, Dick? We, we could actually say that because that was his name, you know, Dick Tracy. And how many how, how am I going to get demonetized for that? I probably will. Because the bots. Because the bots scan everything. But that, that's one of the, that is one of the issues that you can trace a lot of this stuff back 
to uh, to you know just them being so bankrupt creatively that they had to just go around uh, struggling and and like oh what can we add up what, what can we adapt what can we adapt what can we adapt that is definitely and of course he goes on into like with the, with the numbers and stuff that's one thing i will give scott Mendelson credit for he does his numbers he does his research but yeah i i think you know I, I, w I would not blame Batman for it. I would just blame the fact that studios, because of the times, because the technology has started to change. You know, we, we started getting, like, the 90s. The money started changing. The movie tickets started shooting, like, skyrocketing. We started getting all this new technology, like computers, CGI, all this stuff. What was it, like, 91 when Terminator was using, you know, the all the CGI for the liquid metal Terminator for Terminator 2? We, we had this huge shift I, I want to say creatively that, that we uh, we probably won't see the likes of. You know, it's, it's a needle in a haystack sort of thing to find some movie that was not so corporate, not such a studio note thing. You know, you look at something like Demolition Man where they have Taco Bell product placement through it. All through the thing, right? It was still a good movie, but that one really had that stink of corporate studio studio notes the studio says this the studio wants this we want we have to advertise and market and i think that is the biggest problem and people are kind of people are kind of starting to wake up to it because it's way more in our faces now because look at look at the politics involved in movies now look at everything that they're trying to shove in in the 90s it was just you know coca-cola and pepsi and pizza and you know taco bell and all this stuff in the movies now i mean i'm surprised that we don't have pop-up ads in the movies that'll be that'll be in a couple of years <laughs> they're already starting it with video games with unskippable ads yeah, I, I, I did just watch a quartering video about that. They're already starting with the AAA video games where in NH, or in, is it NHL or NBA, one of, one of the sports ball games, they, they did a deep discount on it over the weekend. And yeah, there's like 45 second non-skippable ads in that video game, which is crazy. And that's, go, that's kind of what I always saw a lot of these movies as, especially when they had the corporate tie-ins and the products and the marketing. And yeah, I'm a curmudgeon. Yes, I'm a hipster. Yes, I'm a cinema snob in a lot of ways and movie snob and I don't want to steal the name cinema snob <laughs> shout out to cinema snob by the way I still actually really enjoy his content but you know I am a curmudgeon I am a hipster when it comes to a lot of the stuff I will fully admit it I noticed that is like when I was a kid when we started seeing so much product placement you know especially in the 90s oh my god especially in the 90s Total shout out to Return of the Killer Tomatoes for pointing out a lot of the product placement. I would have probably never noticed that until I saw that. But I, I, I can't just blame Batman for it because we were doing this with everything. You know, we always had this mass marketing. We always had these mass blockbuster adaptations. I mean, when, when studios realized that they could make a crap ton of money off of merchandising, We've had it, you know, we've had it back in the, the 60s and 70s. Look, look at look at Star Trek even, you know, with the Spock helmet. We have this sort of thing. And that, in my opinion, is what kind of ruined Hollywood more than anything. Was it getting so corporate and so studio note heavy and so red tape and behind the scenes drama and licensing rights and movies stopped being made by people who want to make movies and they started being made for the studio notes, for the bottom line, for, for the, you know, it's like, it's like Star Wars now. Star Wars really is just an advertisement for toys anymore. There is no story. There's no characters. They're just, you know, and, and there's genius too, because they're charging you money to go and see a movie that is just advertising other shit for you to buy. Brilliant. It, it is kind of like putting a, putting a band's name on a t-shirt and you pay for it, and then you're, you're out there promoting the band, but you paid for the right to do that. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant print of marketing. I can't stand it, though, and that's part of why I'm so... Uh, I, I'm so frustrated with the way where Hollywood is. But no, I'm not going to blame Batman. This is just to cash in on Batman and Star Wars being things that will get him clicks. I wouldn't blame Batman for it, per se. Was it contributing... Yeah, I think I think it definitely contributed to the current state of movies and pop culture. But but to be honest, I would almost say Ghostbusters 2 probably was part of that as well, as much as I like it. I certainly bought a shit ton of stuff from Ghostbusters 2. Star Wars definitely was one of those things that they realized they could make a crap ton of money on. And and yeah, I 
I, I really, I really have to kind of agree and disagree at the same time. What do you guys think? I don't want to read the entire article. If you want to read it, it's, it's just Scott Mendelson on Forbes. We don't really, it, like nothing, nothing he says is really all that important, but, but you know, not that bad of an article considering some of the ones that he has written. I, I don't, I don't know, 134,000 views. So that, he's not doing too bad. <laughs> but tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am Mecha Random 42, PO Box 1566, Love and Colorado 80539. I will see you guys on the next video, live stream, or wherever. Probably Midnight's Edge After Dark. I'm usually there. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.